What's up, people? What's going on? Matt Garland, MG, the mortgage guy, coming to you live from my office. Sorry for the delay. I know I was supposed to come on here at 2 o'clock, but I was supposed to bring my buyer on with me who's purchasing his home today. He's actually closing today at 5 o'clock. We got caught up with his schedule, so my apologies. He won't be able to make it right now. That's what was the delay. I was trying to get him to come on, come on with me. Which he's going to come on with me, but it's probably going to be later today that we're going to go ahead and hear his story. Um, hold on a second. I'm trying to do like a hundred things at one time, guys. So I apologize right now for this, this delay. But like I was saying, um, trying to wait. I was trying to wait as long as I can. People were hitting me in my DM saying, yo, Matt, what's up? What's up with the with the live? I was gonna just reschedule it until later tonight when when he was available, but I can't reschedule it. So the main thing is I'm gonna talk a little bit about this deal. I'm not gonna go too much into detail because I want him to tell his story and speak about what, you know, his journey, his experience with the 203k loan, but I'll give you guys a little bit of information and then later we can hear, we can hear his story later on today. All right. So what's up everybody? Johnny Dawkins, what's up? What's up Linsky? What up King? Learned a lot from the 203k video. Thank you so much. Big time. What's up? No worries. Just do it when y'all can. But no, we're gonna, I'm gonna get into a little bit of the details right now, right? So, my guy, Sharon, he purchased, him and his wife, they're purchasing a property in Philadelphia, right? They paid $110,000 for this property. The property requires $90,000 worth of rehab. So we're doing a 203K um, full or standard. So if you haven't watched my 203K video, make sure I'm gonna put it at the end of this video. Make sure you watch that, the end of that video. So that way you understand what a 203K full is. Um, let me see, the lighting over there looks kind of bad to me. Let me stand right here. So let me tell you the 203K full. So that video will give you a lot of information on 203Ks and what type of loan it is. We go into detail about that. But he, he's at $90,000 in renovation, so he's all in for this property for $200,000. So now, like I always tell you guys, the ARV is the most important thing. The AR, the, yeah, see that, that light looks so much better. So the ARV on this deal, sorry, I'm watching it on my, on my screen too. So the light looks so much better like this. So the ARV on this deal, let me get back to what I was saying. The ARV on this deal is $350,000, all right? So again, let's, let's get to the board so we can really get to it, right? So he paid, you know when you're looking for something and you can't find nothing that's right in front of you? So, 14, 13. So let me get to this board real quick for you guys, real quick. Let's go to school. Let me show y'all what he did, all right? So, the purchase price, purchase price, 110K is the, is the purchase price, all right? We got the, the rehab of 90K, okay? So he's into it total for 200K. So he's into the property for a total for a total of 200k. All right? The ARV came in at 3 ARV came in at 350k. All right? So now the ARV is the after renovated value for those who don't know. ARV after renovated value. Now, for those of you who just joined onto the show, like I said, I was gonna have my buyer on here with me, but we got he got caught up with a few things. 
So he wasn't able to, to join with me today, but it's all good. I'm gonna still give y'all a lesson. Later on today, he's gonna get on. He's closing today at five o'clock. So after the closing, I'm gonna do another video. You're gonna hear his experience, his side of the story. But for the purposes of this video, just to keep, keep it going, I'm gonna give y'all some education, all right? So again, purchase price, 110. Rehab, 90. He's all in, all in 200K. ARV, after renovated value, 350,000. Now, this is not a guesstimate. This is not what realtors are telling us. This is an official appraisal that we did here at the bank. And that value came in for 350,000. Now, he purchased, he's purchasing his home. It's a two family. So it's a two family in, in Philly, right? I checked the comps in his area. There's already homes right now. We got this appraisal. This deal took us around. Alex, how long did this deal take? Alex, come here. What's up? Come. How long did this deal take? When did we put this deal in? Uh, it's been like two months now, right? Yes. It was in July status for about two weeks, yeah. It was in two, two, two months, right? Yes. All right. So this deal take took two months. So this appraisal was two months old, right? Yes. And we had... Yes. You, we, now, I'm going to give y'all a quick education. We had two appraisals on this house, right? Alex, why did we have two appraisals? Because the seller purchased it. With she don't want to be on video either, so you can just hear her voice. Because she's giving me that look like you better not turn the camera. <laughs> I have All no right? makeup on, guys, so no. Um, basically, because the seller basically purchased the property within six months of selling it. So FHA guidelines is... That a it's a two part guideline. A that it has to you have to be in contract after ninety days. It has to be on the ninety first day when contracts are being signed and distributed and executed. Mm -hmm. So that's the first part. The second part is that if it is within six months of the purchaser of the seller per, of selling the property, it has to have two FHA appraisals, and whatever is the lesser of the two of every metric will be the one used. I hope you guys got those gems right there because a lot of you are buying properties and a lot of realtors out there don't know this for whatever reason. But again, if you are purchasing a home that the seller purchased it in less than six months, then FHA, and you're using an FHA loan, FHA is going to require two appraisals. When you go and sign your contract, you have to make sure that you are signing a contract on the 91st day and above of, of when the sellers purchased it. So in this case, we had to get two appraisals on the deal. Did it have tenants in it already? No tenants. No tenants in this house already, so that wasn't an issue. But imagine trying to get two appraisals, two, two or three K appraisals. It wasn't an oh. easy task. What? Remember we had to get a new contract too in the beginning too because of the 90th day rule. And because when did we sign a contract? It was before it, 90 days, exactly. right? Exactly. So, so we had a lot of bumps. On so this, this deal was filled with so much adversity and yeah. so much hurdles. It's absolutely ridiculous. They signed the contract less than 90 days. So we had to do a new contract um, after the 91st day. Then we still had to get two appraisals. So that's in the buyer. I'm going to let him tell you about all the adversity because he learned so much during this process. Not every deal is going to be hunky dory. It's not going to go smooth sailing, but still, we got it done. And how long, Alex? With all the adversity, all the bullshit, how long did it take us to get this deal done? Forty-five days. Forty-five days. So we still. Um, yeah, forty-five days. Because we didn't care about the, the, we didn't know about the FHA issue, uh -huh. um, since we didn't get title. So we had to wait. We basically two weeks after we were in contract, we found out about that. So that was, you know, delayed the process. So one of the things that delayed up. Thank you, Alex. I'm gonna probably call you back. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that delayed us was that the realtors didn't even notify us that the sellers had purchased the home less than 90 days when they signed the contract. So all you guys who are gonna watch this, who's watching this now, it's about 40, 50 of y'all, and whoever's gonna watch this on a replay, if you're out here buying property, 
Make sure you find out, and, and especially if you're using FHA, make sure you know when the seller purchased that home because there was a lot of delays because of that because we had to do a new contract, et cetera, et cetera. All right? So that was, that was some, some good game. So I hope you guys took notes on that. But with all that being said, we're still getting this deal done in 45 days with all these bumps in the road. There's a lot more bumps in the road, but again, I'm going to let the buyer talk about that. Now, ARV, like I said, is $350,000. So this home buyer, he has 150K profit day one. So when he closes today, he signs the dotted line today at 5 p.m. at the closing. He's already made himself $150,000. That home appraised 45 days ago at $350,000. There are already sales in his neighborhood that are up for sale between $375,000 and $390,000. So when he's done with this construction, or this rehab, he's probably going to be closer to $400,000 with the new comps that's going to hit this summer. So this 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 man made the right decision. He was thinking like an investor and he got himself a great deal. All right? So that's how he made he's used the 203k to help him make that $150,000. Now, let's get into some other numbers, right? His mortgage payment. So I hope y'all got all of these numbers. I hope y'all taking screenshots of this, doing what you have to do. But again, I'm going to go through it one more time before I erase it because I want to go into something else. Purchase price, $110,000. Two family in Philadelphia. The rehab, $90K. All in, $200K. ARV, after renovated value, $350K. $150K profit, day one of ownership. All right? $150K profit, day one of ownership. Now, Let's get into something else. Now, again, you guys hear me preach over and over and over and over again about how FHA is for your primary residence only, right? This is this man. This is going to be him and his family's primary residence. FHA has a one year requirement um, of occupancy for you to live in there. So check this out. This is where it gets even better. His mortgage payment. So his principal, in, with principal interest, taxes, and insurance. Principal interest, taxes, and insurance. We call it pity in my world, right? It's coming up to $1,400 a month. The rental income from one unit, rental income from one unit is 12, what is it, Alex, 1250 or 1200 the rental income is twelve fifty or twelve hundred. So one appraisal said twelve fifty. The other appraisal said fifteen hundred. So we use twelve fifty. All right. So we had, and this is another thing with appraisals, right? When we order appraisals, there's a huh? For multifamily. When we order appraisals for multifamily, so here's some more appraisal game. You can tell me that the rental income is three thousand dollars a month, right? But we're going, to, the lender is always going to go off of what's on the appraisal. Since we had two appraisals, we had two different rental income um, opinions. One appraisal said 1250, the other appraiser said 1500 for this one unit. So from a, a, a qualification purposes, the lender is always gonna use the lower of that number. So in this case, to help him qualify, we use $1,200. But per the realtor, per um, both realtors, Per you know, people I spoke to in the area, everyone's telling me fifteen hundred is more realistic. So for this purpose, I'm gonna tell you guys fifteen hundred dollars is the rental income for this unit. So if you look at that, right? He has a hundred dollar profit. His mortgage payment is fourteen hundred. His rental income is fifteen hundred. That's only on one unit. So that means he's making $100. So he's living for free. The man and his wife and his family is living for free. <laughs> and he has $150,000 of rental income. So guys, 
this is how you're supposed to buy a home. This is how you're supposed to use a 203K. And you're using, listen, every mortgage is a tool. You guys hear me talk about this all the time. Every mortgage is a tool. But you have to use the tools that's available to you. 203K is an amazing tool to use if you are a first time home buyer, if you're looking to buy a new primary residence. This tool can help you make a lot of money. Now, so this is only one unit, right? Only one unit is taking care of this rental income and he's gonna live in the other unit and we're not even talking about the basement yet, right? But that's a whole nother story. Now, let's talk about when he goes ahead and he moves out. Let's talk about the exit strategy, right? Because the plan for him He's using my house hacking methods. Now, we're not going to go, we would love to win 4 3 2, 1, like you guys hear me speak about all the time, but in this case, we couldn't do 4 3 2, 1. So now we're going to do 2 2 and possibly 2, right? So he's going to live. So people always come to me like, Matt, can I do 4 4 4, 3 3 3 3, 2 2 2 2? Yes, you can. It's, it's all on how you position and you structure everything. You make sure that it makes sense to underwrite it. So you can't move from a two family to a three family and the three families in the worst neighborhood. It just has to make sense. But in this case, we're gonna execute a two, two, and two for the next two properties. So now, peep this. His mortgage payment is 1400, right? Let me put this up here. Let's talk about the exit strategy. And I write like crap. Strategy. I can't spell either, but so what? Y'all get it. So his pity, again, is principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, $1,400, right? The rental income from both units now, so, once he moves out, so the rental income will be $3,000 a month. That's from both units. Unit one that he's currently going to rent out and his, and, and his apartment, his departing residence, right? $3,000 a month in rental income. So now, what we're going to do on the exit strategy is we're going to do a cash out a cash out refinance right because again in or you can only have one fha loan at a time so in order for us to repeat this cycle we have to do a cash out refinance while he's still living in the property so six months eight months from now we're going to do that cat we're going to start that process of doing the cash out refinance so let's just use the 350 value because that's what we know is guaranteed. I'm not going to talk about future future value or try to you know speculate on that. So when we do the cash out refinance, with a two family cash out, I'm not I don't want to go probably past 70 percent, right? So we're going to do a cash out refinance. Cash out refi into a conventional loan, right? So we're going to go 70% LTV, right? So if the house is still worth 350K value times 70% LTV, damn, that will give us a new loan amount of. 245k right that'll be the new loan amount okay so now he only owes 200k today but it could be lower depending on how he pays down his mortgage but let's just call it 200k right so 200k payoff Let's just say his closing cost at that time on a 245 loan amount. Let's just say it's another 4% for closing. So let's just say his closing cost is 
So that leaves us 45K, right? Minus, let's just call it 10K for closing. Closing costs. Now, mind you, closing costs can get rolled into the mortgage. So it's only out-of-pocket expense at that time is gonna be the price for the appraisal, all right? So he's gonna walk away with 35K in his pocket, cash out. Now the 10K, again, the 10K closing cost is a very worst case scenario. It could be 6K, it could be 7K. I'm just giving you guys high numbers. I don't need to see you guys in my comments talking about your closing costs are too high. Guys, this is just for estimates and illustration purposes. All of this is subject to change due to market conditions, all right? Well, let's just say he has $35,000 now cash out. Now, his mortgage payment, I can't really speculate on that because I don't know what interest rates are gonna be at that time. But worst case scenario, let's just say his mortgage payment goes up 400 bucks, right? Let's just say 400 bucks. Now his payment will probably go from 1800, but he's still cash flowing $1,200 from this property. Now he's in a conventional loan, right? It's still, we're structuring that cash out refinance, it still has his primary residence because he's technically still living in that property. Now he's gonna take that cash out. Let me erase this. So now he's gonna go take that cash out, use that 35,000, and now he can go reapply the same strategy and use FHA again and use another two or three K for his next property because in the price point that he's looking, Again, another $200,000 all-in purchase. His down payment on a new property will be only $7,000. His closing costs and everything on the 203K, if he doesn't get a seller's concession, will probably be another ten dollars to $12,000. So he may wind up only spending twenty-one, twenty-two thousand dollars $22,000 out of that $35,000 cash out. And he'll be able to repeat that cycle and buy another two family at using a two or three K loan. All right. So this is typically what happens if you use your two or three K properly. This is one of the best loan products that's available in the marketplace. I've been preaching about this for a couple of years on my Instagram before 90% of you guys were paying attention to me. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that you're paying attention to me now and this buyer this buyer here is someone who's been following me, I think, since mid-January. And he was faithfully on my lives, checking in every time I was on lives. And he learned all this information. He got the strength, the courage. He got the, the inspiration to go out and purchase his first property. Um, not just because of me, but, you know, other things he was watching as well. But obviously me, I played a big part in it. And you guys who watch and chime in with your success stories and everything that you guys got going on and help this man and his family secure their bag and create their generational wealth, which he's gonna speak about because his story is, is, great, is beautiful and I want him to really talk about it. But that's the edge strategy when he does the cash out. Now, why, some people are probably thinking, why do you want him to refinance and make his payment go up? So we, number one, so we can use the FHA loan again. Number two is, once he moves out of that property and he's into a conventional loan, now he's gonna be able to invest the title and the deed of that home into his LLC. The mortgage will be in his name, still the debt, but the, the ownership of the property now can go into his, his business name. Now from a liability perspective, he's taken care of, right? He's protected. So that's why I always recommend cash out, refinance out of your FHA, into your conventional loan so that way you can use the fha again but also put the deed of the home into your business name all right so it's about 70 of y'all watching this is kind of my little lesson i was going to reschedule this until the buyer came on um the closing is today at five o'clock so I'm, I'm going to try to get him like 6 6 30. he was going to come on today at two o'clock with me but he got caught up with some things which i understand um, but I wanted to come in here and show you guys the numbers of how all of you watching this, if you're not a homeowner right now, or even if you are a homeowner and you want to refinance and do a 203K, you can as well. But 
I want to show you guys, use these products to your advantage. 203K, Fannie Mae Homestyle, Construction of Permanent Loans, these loans are phenomenal. And not a lot of people are taking advantage of this beautiful product. I hope you guys learned something. I'm going to come check out some of these comments right now. And let me, you know what? If you got a question, call in, right? Call in number 516-881-3732. If you have a question, call in. I don't even want to answer. Look at all these comments because I'm looking at all this stuff and my office is a mess right now. I don't care. But if you have a question, 516-881-3732. Call in. Let me turn my turn my turn my thing right now. All right? Call in if you have a question. 516. Okay, Gloria Smith. Hello, Matthew speaking. Hi. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you today? What's your name and where you calling from? My name is Nina, and I'm calling from Atlanta. Nina from Atlanta. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So talk to me. What's your question? I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking to purchase a home. I would be a first-time home buyer. What all would I need? You're a first-time home buyer, and you're looking to purchase a home. Correct. All right, so I would need to take a look at your... Um, your income, your finance, and, and tell you exactly what you could qualify for. Okay. Have you found Have you found a home yet? I have not found a home yet. I do, I I look at homes every day, but <laughs> <laughs> I have not um, found a home. Yeah, you look at you look at you look at homes every day, huh? What part of Atlanta are you in? I live in Loganville. Loganville. Okay, Loganville. Logan. Look. Okay, and what's your time frame? How soon are you looking to purchase? I want to purchase before my birthday, December. When's your birthday? In December, December 18th. This, oh, my son's birthday is December 17th. Shout out to the Sagittarius in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the Sag in the house, right? <laughs> but yeah, I, can, I mean, listen, I can definitely help you out with that. Where the hell's my garbage can? Somebody stole my garbage can. But, um, you know, I, now I'm looking around my office for my garbage can and I don't see my garbage can. I, I hate that. So I took it. But yeah, you can, um, listen, like I said, if you want to shoot me, shoot me an email, Matthew with two T's, M-A-T-T-H-E-W dot Garland, G-A-R-L-A-N-D at flagstar.com. Shoot me an email, make the subject line, um, you know, 203K live YouTube or something like that. And then, um, you know, put your contact information in there, and then I can uh, have me or one of my assistants reach out to you, and then um, we can we can work on getting you pre-approved and give you the blueprint so that way you can get you can get um, your home by your birthday. Okay. Works for you? I'm looking forward to it. No, I look forward to it too. Send me that email, and um, hopefully we can um, talk this weekend or Monday. All right. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for calling in and checking in. Thank you. I appreciate you. And shoot me a DM, too, so I can follow you back on Instagram. I sure will. All right, good. Good speaking to you. Hello, Matthew speaking. Yeah. Yeah, hello, Matthew speaking. How are you? Yeah, this is George. What's your name? Doing great, doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing well. I can't complain. What's your name again? George, George, nice to meet you, George. Where you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from San Bernardino, California, bro. Oh, my goodness, my brother. You calling from sunny Cali, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be in Cali for the Caesar and DJ Envy Real Estate Seminar. We're going to be in L.A. August 25th. Are you coming to the seminar? Oh, yeah, I'll definitely for sure be there. So make sure. Did you get your tickets yet? Not yet, not yet. I'll actually shoot you a DM. I haven't even heard about it, but now that you mention it, then I'll, I'll, I'll be in no doubt. All right, cool. So are you on my Instagram? Yeah, I'll follow you on Instagram. All right, so make sure you click the link in my bio, swipe left until you see it. You'll see the tickets right there. You can buy the tickets right there. Sounds good, sounds good. But what's your question, brother? Yeah, so I'm calling because, uh, so I do wholesale 
been over here in uh, Cali, in uh, Southern Cali. Okay. And I actually uh, once ran across the top. It's a good place. It's a good place. Uh, he, uh, he currently, like, the, the, the server is going through a uh, proposal uh, process, process. And I'm trying to basically um, get the property in front of before it goes into that whole closure. Okay. Um, so she, she currently owes 70000 uh, 70, on the first mortgage, and then she owes uh, uh, 70000 on the second mortgage. And um, uh, she, she basically wants, like, she wants 30000 for the property itself. So she wants to walk away with 30000 in her pocket. And the, the ARV in the area is about 290 so I'll technically be in it for around 170, um, give or take, but I can negotiate the second mortgage down. But I'm wondering if I could, if I would be actually be able to get that property under my name instead of just um, assigning the contract to somebody else. Okay, so so you want to so you want to purchase the property yourself and not wholesale it. You said what? I said you want to purchase the property yourself and not wholesale it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, listen, I would need to take a look at your, your financials and your credit, like I just told the last caller, in order to determine yeah. what exactly you could qualify for. So if you want to get pre-approved, you can send me an email, matthew.garland at flagstar.com. Um, and then from okay. there, you can, um, you can um, get pre-approved. Alex, are you watching this YouTube? Alex, are you watching this YouTube? Yeah. Can you go on your phone and just put my email? So like for people to say they want to get pre-approved or something yeah. on YouTube. Okay. All right. Thank you, Alex. Um, yeah. So Matthew.Garland at flagstar.com, and um, okay. you know, we can set up an appointment to speak and discuss your options and review your financials and credit and see if we can help you. Yeah, either which way it sounds like a good deal. So let's um let's see what we can do and instead of wholesaling your community, let's get you to buy the community yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so send it over, man. You got the email, Matthew.garland at flagstar.com. Um mention the subject line, you was on this YouTube live, and then we'll we'll get to you and, and get you pre approved. Uh, thank you. Thank All you. Right. Thank, thank you. I appreciate you for checking in. All right, guys, 516-881-3732. I'm going to take a couple more calls. Let's talk about two or three Ks. If you have any questions about the numbers or anything that I just went through on the board, let's talk about that. If not, you can shoot me an email with any of your questions. Like I said, matthew.garland at flagstar.com. Um, I am a two or three K loan expert, um, specialist, expert, guru, all of that wrapped into one. <laughs> That is me. I'll definitely be able to help you um, with your two or three K loans. And um, let's get it in. I know a few of you had called while I was on the other line. Um, there's a lot of comments in here. Let me see. Let me get some comments. Uh, I'm waiting for a year to get this info. Why are you waiting a year? David Galaza, why are you waiting a year to get info? Nina Collins, why are you, why, why are you not buying? You say you're ready to buy. As soon as I finish the July trip, looking for a fourplex in New Orleans, I need your help. Listen, I would love to help you. I love, I love New Orleans. Let's get you that fourplex. Shreveport got some, got some fourplexes too. What's up, Gemini? Can I use two, th two or three k to rehab my house, Jose? Yes. I mean, not Jose, I'm sorry, Jerry. Yes, you can use two or three K to rehab your home. No for info, but to purchase. Oh, okay, okay, good. So listen, man, whatever I can do to help you, David, I'm here to help you. Matthew.garland at flagstar.com. Shoot me an email, make the subject line. You know, you was on this YouTube live, so that way I can get to it. And um, whatever I can do to help you guys, whatever I can do to help any of you guys, I'm here for the help. 
This was like a spontaneous episode of Rants and Gems. Once I get the buy on, I'm back from the closing or whatever the case may be, I'm going to get him on here. You're going to hear from the buyer side because I kind of ran through these numbers and the exit strategy real quick just to give you all some, some quick information and education. What's up? Did you um, see the comment about 203K refi? No. What does it say? Um, if you could do a 203K with a refi. Oh, that's the one I just, they just said it, I think. Can I use a two or three key rehab for my house? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I said yeah. Okay. All right. Um, that's Alex, y'all. She's my right hand, and Bendy's in there, too. So, this is live. Like I said, um, <laughs> I'm watching the playback on this right now. It's kind of funny watching myself. But, like I said, if you have any help, if you have any questions, if you need any help, and if you have any questions, I should say, I'm here to help you. Um, again, Matthew Garland, NMLS 58700. Make sure all everyone, there's 50, 60 people in here. Make sure you like this video, comment, share it with your community. Tell them to su subscribe. I'm going to get a lot more of my buyers at the closings. In the second half of this year, I'm going to do more features and more things where I'm, I'm bringing on people who I'm actually helping and letting them tell their stories to you guys because I want to inspire as many people as possible to go out here and execute on real estate transactions. And I want them to tell their stories instead of me telling the stories. And then I'm going to run through the numbers like I just ran through the numbers right here to further educate you guys on this home buying process. But I need everybody in this room who's watching this is 50 plus of y'all. There needs to be 50 plus likes. So like this, comment, share it with your community, make, get the word out. We're going to keep spreading this home ownership gospel until we reach everyone. All right. So if you guys don't have, if no one's going to call in right now, I'm about to end this because I've probably been on this for about 20, 30 minutes and I got a very busy day. I got to head to Chicago for the seminar this weekend. I hope if you, if you're going to, if you live in Chicago, the surrounding areas, Caesar and DJ NB seminar. We will be there Sunday um, at the Preston Bradley Center from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. All right. So make sure you click that link in my Instagram bio to get your tickets. Um, I look forward to seeing everybody who's going to be in Chicago. And let's answer this call. Hello, Matthew speaking. Hey, Matthew, this is Byron. How you doing? Who's this? Byron. Byron, what's up, brother? Where you calling from? I'm calling from Lu from Louisiana, Lake Charles. Louisiana, what's up, brother? Thank you for calling in. Uh, hey, my question is, uh, you had got back to me on uh, Instagram about the two hundred three K loan, but uh, you asked for financials. Y'all asked for what? Two months of uh, bank statements. Last two months of bank statements. Last two years of W-2s, last 30 days of pay stubs, copy of your ID. Okay, what are we looking for in the bank statements? We're looking to see money. So I need money? <laughs> money. Amount of money? I mean, whatever money you have is we just need to see proof of funds. Okay. Yeah. Fine, I'll get with you about it today. Did you click the link in my bio? Did you did you, if you click the link in my bio in my Instagram bio, um, swipe left, you'll see the apply now button. If you complete that quick form, you'll get an email um, automatically, um, and you'll have all the documents that I need from you, plus my online loan application where you can complete that online loan application. And then once you get everything, once you send the documents and complete the, the, the loan application, just show me a DM or something, let me know you did it, and we'll get on it within one within 48 hours, and we'll get back on the phone with you and get you pre-approved. Okay, yeah, I clicked the link and I got the information on what's needed. Okay. But is it just W-2s or is it 1042? What is the 1040? That's the tax returns. Okay, okay. All right, I got you. All right? All right. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for checking in. I appreciate you. Bye. All right. Have a good one. Enjoy the weekend. You too. No. 
Somebody said, so the taxes and the W-2s are not enough to show proof of funds. Taxes and W-2s is not proof of funds. Taxes and W-2s is your income. Proof of funds are your assets. Two separate things. So you got to show your income and you got to show your assets. Too many people out here trying to buy homes with no money. You can't be out here trying to buy homes with no money. That's, that's like an urban legend. I don't know what the hell people... You know, you got a lot of people 100% financing. That's all fine and dandy, but you still should have money. Period, point blank. I don't care if you're getting 100% financing because you're getting a down payment assistance or you're getting a home buyer's grant. I don't care about any of that stuff. You can use it, great, but you still should have money, right? Things come up in your home that you're going to need to repair. You should always have reserves. You should never go into a home with no money. Never. All right. So do I do refinances? Yes, I do re do refinances and I need everyone to like this video, comment, share it with your community and make sure you tell them to subscribe also. Um, what's the lowest credit? What's the lowest your credit can be in order to get pre-approved? Samuel, good question. For FHA, the minimum credit score is 580. For conventional, 620. No problem. You're welcome. All right. Hey, Matt, call me. I left you a message. We'll be in New York in July with the boys. Check your IGDM for my number. All right. Send me that DM again. So it's at the top because the DMs in my IG is like the matrix. Can you go from a two family to a four family or just from two to? All right. Aisha Berry, 516 881 Three seven three two. Call me, call me, and I'll answer that question because that's a good question. Five one six eight eight one three seven three two. Aisha Berry, let's answer that live so everyone can hear what your plan is because we need to hear about that. Hi, is there a limit I can spend on the property and construction costs? All right. So is there a limit you can spend? It all depends on, number one, are you still going to be within the FHA loan limits? Number two, is the after-renovated value going to support whatever repairs you're going to do? So those are the things that we look at to determine if you, what your max and minimum would be um, for rehab. All right. Yeah, I got a lot of questions in these comments. I'm not going to be looking at all these questions. I don't know. I'm not asking you to jump on live with me like we're on Instagram here. We only want to hear your voice. 516-881-3732. I'm not going to sit here and read all these questions. There's too many of them. Now it's becoming like the matrix to me. So if you want me to answer your question, you can call in. Now we have a lucky caller. Hello, Matthew speaking. How you doing? I'm alive and blessed. I can't complain. How about yourself? I'm good, thank you. It's Luana. I'm Puff BK from IG. What's your name? Puff BK from IG. I'm always asking you questions. I'm always calling and yeah. asking questions. Yes, I love you. How are you? <laughs> thank you. I'm good. I do have a question. And um, all right, so we live out in Long Island. Okay. My husband and I have this house. However, I'm going to do the tools we can own without him on my own. But I want to rent this house out, and I know they have to have the justification and the income thing. How does that work? Is that okay? So you're going to rent out the current house that you live in, and you're going to buy a new house to, to do your rehab and move into that house. Yes. Yes, you can do that. Okay. And you can use the rental income, the potential rental income, to help qualify from the house that you're going to move, from your departing residence. Okay. So I would, okay. I would need a, a, a lease and a security deposit from your future tenant. Um, and, a secu and a security deposit can be a hundred bucks. It don't have to be like a full month or rent or anything like that, but it could be a hundred dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. At least on a security deposit. Good, I'm gonna add that to my list. And you're gonna have the guy on today, right? You have another live? Yeah, I'm gonna do another live later on today because I'm gonna get the buyer. Um, he was supposed to come on with me at two o'clock, but he got caught up with a few things before the closing. Uh, so that's why it took me a little while longer to jump on. And I actually was going to reschedule it until he um, was on it.
but I figured let me just use this time while I got you guys' attention to kind of run through the numbers of everything. Okay, I know he closes at five o'clock, so I feel too late. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not going. I'm not going to Philly for the closing, so I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to take one or two more callers before I cancel this live and go about my day because I got some things I need to do. So, 516-881-3732. I'm going to take one more caller, answer your questions, and then we can we can get things going. Aisha Berry, you said you shy. Please, woman. Nobody got time for that. Hello, Matthew speaking. Now, what's going on with Sam? Who's this? Sam. Sam, what's up, brother? What's going on? I'm watching your live right now. I have a question. Talk to me. So I'm trying to cash out the refinance, but um, I'm trying to take cash out of my loan that I have in my house. And I was just wondering what the lowest my credit has to be in order to do so. The lowest your credit, the minimum credit score requirement for a cash out refund? Yeah. Are you trying to do an FHA loan or a conventional? FHA. Uh, 600. 600? Yeah. All right, appreciate it. Where's your house located? I'm in Massachusetts. Okay, let's do your loan then. I'm nationwide. All right, appreciate it. I hit you up. All right, hit me up. You got my email, my DM? Yeah, I got it. Matt Garland, Matthew Garland at Flagstar. Matthew Garland at Flagstar.com. All right, I got you. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. All right. Hello, Matthew speaking. Hello. Hey, what's Hello. up? Hello. Yeah, this is Matthew. How are you? Hello. Hey, man, how are you? This is old lady. I'm down in uh, Texas, and I actually came to the Atlanta um, DJ Envy conference. Okay, how did you like it? Okay, I love it. Talk to me. So I want to know, like, you know, I know y'all just left there. I was going to try to get down there for that, but I didn't make it. But I, um, um, just knowing maybe what you're going to do generally about your divorce and things like that, how much money you have to pay for your divorce and things like that. Like, how much money do you have to pay for your divorce? Okay. And then I'm going to get the most family unit. And I want to know, like, what is too bad? Because a lot of the areas I'm looking at, you know, I work with the young boys. I told you uh, with the Robert Jack Foundation. Okay. And so I'm trying to say, what is, what's too bad in terms of condition uh, for a first buy on a fourplex? It doesn't matter the condition because you can do a rehab loan. So the condition, I would tell you this: the the more the more effed up the house is, the better. Okay. Because that's where you that, that's where you're gonna make your money. God for rehab loans. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to know because I'll be needing your help. That was me. I'm going to be like literally needing your help for the next month with a multi family unit down in New Orleans. All right. You got my email, right? Matthew.Garland at flagstar.com, right? Yeah. And that's me. I thought you'd be going to be up there uh, in July. So I want to get, I want, I want to text basis with you this week because I want you to come on the whole side of the boys. Oh yeah, I remember you. Yeah, I remember. What's up? And you and and you came and you came to my networking event too, right? Uh huh. Yeah, I came to the networking event. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And all of this night, Rashawn, Rashawn said he's going to try to come by too. So I'm trying to get both of y'all in there. I already told Robert that I wanted you all to come by and give information to the boys about, uh, you know, real estate and having their ideas about what they can do outside of being. Entertainers and athletes, you know, because we, we're taking them to the NBA corporate office, but we want them to know these are some people you can see who are doing like Matt Garland is a, you know, branch manager who you can talk to about mortgage loans and the kind of field that he's in and career he's in. Remember, 
make it too. Yeah, I'll definitely try to make it as well. I I, I think I'll be in town, but I'll, I'll reconfirm my schedule. Okay, I'm going to send the information to your email. Okay, that's perfect. And then right after that, I need, my, I need help on my fourplex. <laughs> well, let's get you to this fourplex. Let's talk to the boys. Let's do it all. No problem. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. All right. All right, guys. There you have it. Um, wow, I was about to sign off on this, but let's see. Hello, Matthew speaking. Hi, Matthew. Hey. Uh, my name is, hey, my name is Payne. What's your name? I have a question. What, what was your name again? Hello, Maxine. Maxine. What's up, Maxine? I'm alive and blessed. So I'm the person that one time I think when we were talking about the um how you can do the three and a half percent on a four or a triplex. Okay. Like somebody gave me that information saying that you couldn't do that. Yeah, somebody gave you wrong information. fix and flip you can do like hard money loan for that and your four family okay. your four family will be your primary residence so you can do FHA or conventional for that so if you can do both then why not because one is an investment property one is the primary so you'll, you'll be fine as long as you can qualify I can't answer that because I don't know the sales price. I don't know your rehab cost. Um, I don't know any of the, the particulars of this deal. So I would say as much money as possible. Okay. Okay. But once I know the particulars, okay. once I know the particulars, sales price, rehab cost, you know, all the other good stuff, then I can probably, I can give you a much better answer. But right now, I, I really wouldn't know. Just said 100k though, right? Yeah, but I'm, that's why I just said the 
100K just to be on the safe side. All right, so we're going to use the worst case scenario because in construction and in, in rehab, you always want to use the worst case scenario, right? So you enter this property, okay. max, you're all in 135K. Right. What's the ARV you said? So they are going from, I think one of them, the houses, which was, and I think the one that I'm, I am looking at is one of the bigger ones, but one of the smaller ones went to like 185, I think it said, and then another one went to like 200. So 185 to 200,000. Yes. All right, so in this case, I'm gonna use the worst case scenario again, 185. Okay. All right, so you got mm -hmm. a purchase price, so all right, everybody following along, right? Purchase price, 35K, rehab, 100K, all in, 135K, ARV, 185,000, right? So, let's do some numbers. How you figure out, divide that by 185. That gives you 73%. So your ARV is 73%. You got that? Yeah. Now, with an ARV of 73%, that is extremely, extremely high. Most hard money lenders or fix and flip lenders want to see you around 65% ARV max. Now, you do have some hard money lenders out there that will go up to 75% ARV, right? But they will probably require you to put a lot more down payment or they'll give you a much higher interest rate. But what I would tell you, what my advice would be, is try to stay, keep your ARV 65, maybe 70% at the max. But okay. you want to probably try to get 65% ARV. Okay. So what I would do is, me personally, me personally, 185 times, let's say 65%, that comes up to 120,000. So in order for you to reach that ARV goal, of 65%, your all-in cost, you need to shave that by at least $15,000. Okay. Right? So, so this is the 85, which is what I was saying. Okay. Yeah, and that will be the, exactly. That will be your 85K that you said from the very beginning. Because what people need to realize, right, and I don't think a lot of people take into consideration, everyone's looking, at, like you said, your comps are ranging from 185 to 200, right? So in, in this case, if you go with the 185 at the worst case, in your worst case rehab at 100K, and you at 185, you're not taking into consideration if you have to give somebody a seller's concession. Right. So that's going to cut into your 185 profit because the home may not appraise for higher. What if the home stays on the market longer than expected, and now you've got to lower your price? So right. you want to, you kind of, and then you got to look at all your carrying costs too. Like how much is this going to cost you while you're doing your rehab with taxes, insurance, you know, interest payments to a hard money lender, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to, okay. and that's why I'm trying to tell you and I'm telling everybody who's watching this today to when you're doing any type of fix or flip or hard money loans, try to keep your ARVs below 70% because it, you got to take into consideration your carrying costs, sales concessions, lowering the price for whatever reason, if the market starts to decline. Because when you start your fix, your fix and flip, the market could be hot. By the time you finish, the market could be soft, it could be declining. You don't know. Nobody has a crystal ball when it comes to the market. No one knows what the hell is going to happen. So you always want to be prepared for the worst case scenario. Okay. All right. So that's well, the reason I was thinking of flipping it was because, like that, I guess that question that person asked you was, could you go from a two to the four? I was thinking that you couldn't, like, go from a single to a four, that you need to start out, like, at a four. So that's why I was thinking it would be better for me just to get it and flip it. 
No, 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 no. So, yes, you're right when, when you're saying going from a two to the four, from one two family to a four family as a primary is difficult. But if you're buying this as an investment property, we're using hard money for this deal. So it's not going to be in your personal name. It's going to be in your LLC okay. name. So this one family has nothing to do with your personal because it's a strict, you don't own it. Your company owns it. Yeah, okay. So when you go buy your fourplex, that's going to be your primary residence. That's going to be you qualifying for the property, your income qualifications, your credit qualifications. We're looking at your employment history, getting verifications of employment, verification of your, your proof of funds, you know, all that good stuff that we do with FHA and conventional loans. That's totally separate from this transaction that we're speaking about here on the board. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't want to keep you just in case somebody else want to answer questions. Thank you. No problem. Shoot me an email, Matthew.Garland at flagstar.com or shoot me a DM and let's talk more about these projects, okay. especially that four family. Let's help you get that. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. I appreciate you. Bye. All right. So guys, we went, we went into a lot today. Not only did we talk about conventional loans, but we talked about hard money, fixing and flipping. We kind of went, I kind of went beyond the scope of what I wanted to speak about here. But it's a lot of information this, and that's why I need everybody to sit here and like, share, and comment on this page, on this video. Because there's a lot more information that I gave you guys than, I, than what I was expected to. So, with that being said, I'm about to wrap this up because I just realized it's 3.30 and I've been on here for an hour, and I had no intention on being here for an hour. So, with all that being said, thank you guys for checking in. Thank you to everybody who called in today. I appreciate all of you. Um, like I said, like, comment, and share. If you're not on my Instagram, MG the Mortgage Guys, my IG, Chicago. Looking forward to seeing you guys this Sunday at the Season DJ Envy Real Estate Seminar. And um, later today, I'm probably going to get back on live with the buyer um, and we'll, we'll, we'll run through his side of the story and get his testimony and that way you guys can hear it from him. So make sure you got your, you hit that bell and, and put on those notifications on YouTube and then make sure you put on your post notifications on my IG because you know the al algorithm has been playing games with us and um, we'll take it from there. All right. So see you guys in a couple hours. I got to go. Got to go make the donuts real quick. Peace. Thanks for joining.